Yo, listen up, here's the story About a little guy that lives in a blue world And all day and all night And everything he sees is just blue Like him inside What's up everybody, it's your boy C. Sams And this is Infinity Watch Where it's my job to prepare you For the big blockbuster that's coming up Next year, May 2018 Infinity War Avengers War, a combination of 10 years of content given to us by the Marvel Studio, all wrapped up in this big, huge movie. Now, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, you may have started to see some stuff surface up. Comic Con is right around the corner, so you know we're going to get some more footage. We're going to get some stuff handed down to us from Marvel, basically giving us more information, more content, and getting us even more hyped for but before we get to it, you guys got to understand how we're getting there. So, last time we touched on phase one, basically the foundation of the MCU. Now we're stepping into phase two. Now in phase two, we're going to get a bigger explanation to each and every character that we've met. We're also going to get a look at the big plot device that is driving these movies and connecting all of these movies together. So, before we uh, get into all of that, we have to go in order. Listen up, here's the story about a little guy that lives in a blue world and all day and all night. And We're going to be stepping into phase two with my man, Iron Man, the third installment of the trilogy of the Iron Man movies. Now, if you take a look at certain things, Iron Man is the only MCU movie that has an Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, and Iron Man 3. There's no subtitle or anything like that, which is pretty good. Pretty good callback to the original. Now, check out my shirt. You've seen this shirt before in a couple of videos, but the next three videos that we're going to be talking about, the characters are right here on my shirt. We're focusing on Iron Man, and we're going to jump over to Thor The Dark World, and we're going to be talking about Captain America Winter Soldier. Woo. These movies were really good. Now, I'm going to touch on For the Dark World when we get to that video. A lot of people didn't really like that movie. Very divisive in a sense, but there is some big, big, big things that we need to focus on when we get to that movie. And once I break down that movie, I hope we get a better view a better appreciation for what Marvel has done with that entire Thor story. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about Iron Man. Kaboom! Man, what a way to kick off this particular movie. Now, we're seeing Mark 1, Mark 2, and the Mark 3 suit being destroyed. What is destroying them? Why is this happening? We need to find out, and the movie is going to jump right into it. But before we go into the present, we have to look at the past. In 1999, Tony Stark is at this big convention where there are a bunch of other scientists, but Tony Stark is his arrogant, cocky self. And he's pretty much calling the shots, doing his own thing. <laughs> Happy Hogan has a mullet. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, uh, we're getting to uh, him meeting with different people. Now, one person that he meets in particular is Jensen. Now, we see Jensen in the first Iron Man movie, the person who saved his life by the, by the, the shrapnels in his chest, by hooking up the car battery to it. So, we're starting to see him here. They met a long time ago. And during that conversation, uh, you know, Tony Stark would be in himself, you know, kind of pushing him to the side. And Jensen said, well, you know, maybe some other time. Uh, man, what a, what a great callback. Anyway. We're seeing him work the crowd and everything like that. He's getting to the elevator where he's going up to his penthouse. And sure enough, the person who slips underneath Happy Hogan is Killian. Killian is going to later be a, a bigger uh, part of this movie, but at the time, he looked like a nerdy guy putting together this think tank of uh, some type of uh, uh, human experimentation, another way of building the super soldier. Uh, everything is kind of surrounding that, but they don't really specify that, but that's pretty much what it is. Now, back in this hotel room, uh, Tony is about to get his thing, uh, well, I don't want to say that, but he's about to get his recall. But during this time, we see the early stages of the extremists. The extremists is also a key part of this particular movie. We don't get a lot of information, we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of foundational stuff, a lot of things 
uh, foreground in order to give us what we're going to need throughout this movie. Now, basically Happy Hogan rips off this piece of the plant, the plant reconstructs itself, but there is, a, uh, there is an error in its makeup which causes it to explode. And that's what we got. So basically, Tony gets his freak on, Killian, at the time when he was in the elevator, was told by Tony, hey, go upstairs, I'm going to meet up with you upstairs on the balcony. And sure enough, he was left outside in the cold on the balcony. Tony was doing his thing. So basically, why am I explaining all this? Is because Tony took the time to explain all this to us, to give us some foreground of what's going on. Now, we thrust right into the present. And as we get into the present, we see the Ten Rings. Now, finally, they are specified and they are talking about the obvious Ten Rings, the same organization that took Tony Stark back in Iron Man 1. Now, the Ten Rings has a face, and the face is the Mandarin. Let me pause for just a second. Out of all the movies of the MCU, I did not like this movie whatsoever. Let me take that back. I like the beginning. I like some of the middle. And then the big reveal that happens, which I'm going to talk about. So if you haven't seen this movie already, spoilers to come. Once we get to that part of the movie, I was done. I literally sat in the movie theaters and I was like, Okay, what are we gonna do? And I saw that part and I was like, done. And I shut down the entire movie. I shut down the entire movie. I had to literally go back and watch the movie again and again to get a better appreciation for the rest of the movie. Because after that reveal, I completely shut down. I love Iron Man. Cartoons and everything like that, I was really, really involved in those cartoons and the comic books. I loved Iron Man. And to know that he had such a main villain who was not technically sound, as Iron Man, but he was a threat, was the Mandarin. And for them to do what they did to the Mandarin later on in this movie, nah. Tony is now building a bunch of suits. He's onto his Mark 42 suit. So that just goes to show how many suits Iron Man actually has. Now, he's going through this whole entire phase. He's going through what's going on as far as building this suit and putting the suit together. And he's having a good time doing it. However, there's something seriously wrong with Tony. Meaning, uh, there are parts in this, in this opening scene where we see that even though he's enjoying himself, there is something wrong with him. Keep in mind, in 2002 during the Avengers, Iron Man took a missile, a nuke, that was heading for the city and went up into space. He went into space and he saw things that no other person has ever seen. He saw a uh, uh, a barrage of aliens on the way to Earth, he saw all of that. And then when he fell through the wormhole, he was nearly about to die. And of course, he was saved by my man, Hulk. But Tony was in a bad shape. He was dealing with post-traumatic uh, post syndrome, pretty much. Uh, basically, he went through so much, and the only way for him to cope with what's going on with him is to build. And that's the only thing that he can do. Now, Pepper Potts has moved in with him, and there is a scene where Pepper and Tony are sleeping, and for whatever reason, his Iron Man Mark 42 is connected to him uh, digitally. So he may have called it in his sleep, and while he's having dreams and nightmares, Pepper tries to wake him. Then Mark 42 suits come and grabs Pepper. And I thought that was so scary because he's not even in the suit and the suit is fully aware of what's going on and about to attack Pepper. Tony wakes up, shuts down the suits, take apart the suit. You have to look at the seriousness. If you've ever dealt with anybody with those type of issues, understand why uh, this particular part of the movie was very, very serious in tone. Now, Marvel gets a lot of flack for being lighthearted you have to look at some of the deeper stuff that happens in the movie and some of the topics that they can touch. So, uh, Pepper leaves Tony. Tony is sitting there. He's just, he's just there. Now, during this time, Pepper is also running the company. So, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I'm jumping around a little bit. Uh, Pepper is, is at the company. Happy Hogan is there as well. Killian, the person that we saw, the nerd that we saw, is this, you know, Adonis. And he's pretty much trying to get Pepper 
to sign off with him to work with A. Basically, uh, working with his company who is doing uh, self-repair of the body. So if someone is hurt on the battlefield, their body can just self-heal itself and repair itself. Broken limbs, uh, torn limbs, the body can just recreate and heal itself. However, he needs more money and he needs to be connected to a huge juggernaut known as the Stark industry. But of course, Pepper kind of shuts him down. He's a little upset, but that doesn't stop uh, his initial plan. Now, we see Happy Hogan trying to figure out who the shifty guy is, the person, his valet, that's with him. So he follows him to the, uh, to the theater in uh, downtown Hollywood, I'm assuming. Um, a uh, little bit of a scuffle happens, pretty much. The guy that went to go see, man, there's so much stuff in the movie that you have to explain. Anyway, the shifty guy met this uh, veteran and he gave him a bunch of stuff for the extremists. So he takes in the extremists. His body does not take in the extremists. It doesn't get through whatever phases is going on inside of him. And because of that, he combusts and he explodes. During this whole thing, Happy Hogan is in the area. Is in the area. He gets thrown away. Happy is in a is in a coma. Tony then finds uh, finds him at the hospital and everything like that. And pretty much the Mandarin is taking all the credit for what's happening. There's a connection further down in this movie. But basically, Iron Man says, "You know what? You're gonna die, Mandarin. I'm coming for the body. I'm not going through the whole political system and how they're trying to." Uh, find you and stop you. I'm just gonna go and take care of this myself. So he gives the Mandarin his address. Now during this time, the same lady that was there from before um, in the hotel room with Tony, she's back now and she says, well, I think my boss is working for the Mandarin. And pretty much before they get a chance to get into it, the Mandarin sends his goons, the same shifty guy and a couple of helicopters to start destroying uh, Stark's place. Um, and that's it. You see all of his suits being destroyed. You see everything in his house being destroyed. During the scene, though, there is a great, great uh, detail and camera work that they do when you see the Mark 42 suit being attached to Pepper Potts by Tony. And he tells Pep, get out of the building, take her, get out of the building. They get out of the building, and then once they're out of the building, oh my goodness, this was so cool. There's a lot of things in this movie that I thought were really cool. There are also some things that really killed me. Anyway, he then says to Jarvis, uh, Jarvis tells him, Pepper Potts is clear from the structure. And then he does this thing where he does this, and he brings it to him, and then you see the suit coming apart off of Pepper, and joining onto Tony, man, that thing was so cool. Anyway, after all of this, everything is destroyed, his house is destroyed, Tony is in the water. Now, while Tony is in the water, he's being pummeled by debris, and Jarvis tells him to take a deep breath. The hand from the suit comes off, and then grabs Tony's hands, grab hold, and then pulls Tony out Yo, this, this, this whole entire scene was just immaculate because it showed the type of loyalty and the trust that Tony has in Jarvis and also in his Iron Man suits. But then um, he ends up getting out the ocean and he flies away. Now, before we get to the part where he flies away, uh, there is a part earlier where he's actually trying to figure out and trying to find a connection between all the Mandarin explosions. Now, the, the closest connection that he's found is a place in Tennessee. Now, he asked Jarvis to set up a flight plan for Tennessee before all the explosion with Happy Hogan had went down, before all the stuff with his home went down. The last thing Jarvis remembered was to take him to Tennessee. And as he goes to Tennessee, the suit shuts down. If you remember the commercials for this movie, there is an iconic part where you see Iron Man, Tony Stark, walking, and the Iron Man suit is not on him. It's, it, it, he's dragging the Iron Man suit. I was like, you're Iron Man. How would you drag in your own suit? It, it, it blew my mind. Anyway, you see him in Tennessee, and the Iron Man suit shuts down. He breaks out, he breaks into this garage, and he's there, and this kid meets his kid, and banter between these two. Freaking hilarious. Um, basically, he, he ends up trying to figure out who 
who the Mandarin is, why is these things happening as far as human beings exploding. So he's trying to connect all these tissues together. Meanwhile, the Mandarin is still threatening the United States, killing people on, on TV, doing certain things to try to get the attention of the president. And it's definitely working. Now, one thing that we didn't touch on is uh, War Machine. Now, War Machine has a new paint job and he's brand new, rebranded as the Iron Patriot. So they basically, basically sends out the Iron Patriot to go try to find the Mandarin. Now, back to Tony. Now, Tony is uh, trying to figure out what's going on. So he talks to the mother of a, of a different veteran who exploded himself or killed himself, whatever you want to call it talks to her and pretty much breaks down the fact that hey um, what's going on your son was a was a weapon he was used and then a police woman came a police woman came through uh, tried to arrest Tony and of course she ends up being an extremist uh, pretty much killing everybody trying to get to Tony. Tony runs out same shifty character he steps in as well he's there too and pretty much the, a, a little bit of a scuffle happens. Um, Tony ends up killing her by being Tony Stark. Smart. Um, pretty much stops him the same way uh, by using the little kid. So, oh man, this banter between these two. This was, this was just great. Uh, there was a part of the scene where Tony got the information he needed and he was going to a different location to try to get it to Ro to try to get to Rody or to try to get to someone. So pretty much he's talking to the kid and he's like, yeah, um, I'm gonna need you to stay by the suit. He said, do you hear that? We're done. And it's just it's just so, you gotta appreciate um, Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark as a character. He's hilarious as his character. Anyway, we see him drive off. A lot of stuff is happening. Uh, basically the chick that, was, that, that showed up at Tony Stark's house who was at that hotel back in 99, is actually working with Killian. This was all a plan to get Tony to come on board with what they wanted to do, but the only way to do that, they had to get Pepper Potts. So once they got Pepper Potts, uh, now they have the incentive they need to bring Tony in. Meanwhile, Tony is still trying to connect the dots when it comes to AIM. He understands that AIM is what it is, what is driving, um, was funding the Mandarin at the time. So he gets in, he gets in touch with Rhodey, uh, figures out where Rhodey's suit was built um, as far as the rebranding is concerned. He also figures out uh, different, not figure out, but he actually sees how Killian uh, went about getting these soldiers on board with what he was doing and then what causes his explosions. So now he's piecing all the pitches, all, all the, all the uh, points together. Now while he's driving, he gets back in touch Ask him, hey, Jarvis, are you up? Where is the Mandarin? Uh, where is the broadcast being held from? He says, uh, well, Florida. So Tony starts to go crazy. Now, there are some scenes in this movie, a couple of scenes in this movie, where you see uh, Tony starts suffering from anxiety. He's suffering from this anxiety because of the fact that he just went through all that he went through in uh, New York. So it, it's, it's really becoming a big deal for him and he's very, very uh, unstable in a sense. So, but anyway, we're moving on from that. He gets to the point where he's going to get to Florida. He's also going to find the Mandarin. Since he doesn't have a suit, he has to build his own thing. So we start to go back and see Tony Stark as the builder, as the creator, as the mechanic. We start to see him take regular stuff. He was straight MacGyvering it the whole entire time. He gets through all the uh, oppositions at the mansion where they found the Mandarin gets to this point now remember that part in the beginning of this video where I said that this is the part that I'm going to say spoilers and this is the part that really frustrates me get ready for some frustration <sighs> okay I get it the Mandarin back in the comics back in the days was an Asian dude with rings with magical rings on his fingers who did different types of things with the fingers I get it a little outdated they took the time create a new Mandarin that was more relevant to this day and age, more relevant to Tony Stark's story. We found that, we got that, and Ben Kingsley, Kingsley, we understand. You did a great job. You sold in the beginning. 
you sold me. I'm like, alright, this is the Mandarin, he got the rings on his finger. I don't care if the rings don't do anything, they're just symbolism. Fine. But we got this guy who is a huge terrorist. I'm cool with that. Tony Stark gets through everybody. He gets to the room where the Mandarin is. We see the Mandarin and we're about to get this confrontation. Instead, we get the Mandarin step out of the bathroom after blowing it up and he's a joker. He's an actor, a character actor. Everything he's doing is because he was hired to do something. This is what they do with the Mandarin. This part frustrated me so much to the point where I was done with the movie. Completely done because I said to them, you know what? Marvel, you've done a great job with these with these villains. Now, everybody always says that Loki was the best villain. And at that present time, Loki is the best villain because number one, he's the one that's still alive. Number two, we really don't know what happened to Red Skull, so Red Skull is also in the run as a, as a really wicked villain. Iron Monger, gone. Whiplash, gone. Abomination, still around too. But Abomination with meh, 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 meh. Anyway, we're getting to the Mandarin, who is the villain for Tony Stark. The villain. And this is what they gave us. I understand that this is Shane Black's way of, of twisting things up and this is his own type of humor. A lot of people enjoyed it. I am one of those people who did not enjoy it. This was a huge letdown for me. And even though the banter between them was eh, okay, it, it frustrated me so much. Um, I did better than I thought. I thought I was going to shoot the camera so Anyway, uh, Tony Stark gets hit, the head is chained up. Um, that's when Killian comes in and pretty much exposes that we have Pepper and she's going through the extremity procedure. She's, she's still stuck in, I love how they said this, they said she's still in phase two, which we're in phase two, anyway. Um, she's still stuck in this phase. Now her body can either accept extremis and she'll have the extremis in her or rejects it. And once it rejects it, cool. So Tony is getting more fearful, and he's saying, I'm not going to help you. The botanist girl, oh, I'm sorry, I don't forget her name, but I, I didn't even like her character anyway. But, you know, she did play a good part in what she was there to do. She pretty much says that she will put the extremis in her body, and if she doesn't, um, if she doesn't let go of Tony, pretty much he shoots her. Anyway, he leaves. He has more things to do and more important things to do. Meanwhile, Rhodey is still trying to find where the Mandarin is. Uh, he gets to this one spot. Uh, this is before. He gets to this one spot. Um, one of the extremist girls was in there, shuts down his suit, and they pretty much take the suit. Now, once we get back to the present, this present moment, uh, they're heating up the suit. The suit is going to open up. Rhodey jumps out, hits dude, then Killian blows fire from his mouth. Killian blows fire from his mouth. And I didn't get it, but okay. <laughs> so uh, even even though Rhodey was like, free fire. So we move him out the way, and now the Iron Patriot, the shifty guys in the Iron Patriot suit, and the Iron Patriot suit is going to be riding with the president in order to uh, take the president. Um, that is trolling horse, pretty much. Um, during this entire time, Tony Stark little watch is starting to go off. It's pretty much telling him that the Iron Man suit should have sufficient amount of energy and it should be able to come to him. Remember, he's in Florida. The suit's in Tennessee. So the suit, him bringing the suit to him, the suit's gonna fly from Tennessee all the way to Florida. Okay. There's a guy that I watch on uh, the YouTube, which is uh, CinemaSins. And CinemaSins, he pretty much break that down. I don't know how accurate that is, but just hearing it, I'm like, yeah, that's a little bit crazy. But anyway, um, finally, the suit comes on to him. He gets to he gets to all the guards and everything like that. He's back in his suit. The suit has a little bit of energy, but it has enough energy. Uh, basically, the Trojan horse is gone, which is Iron Patriot is gone to be with the president. Uh, Iron Man gets Rhodey. Rhodey and Iron Man confronts the Mandarin, and he was about to shoot the Mandarin. I, I wouldn't have been mad if he did, but they got the information that they needed from the Mandarin in order to, to move on. So, Mandarin uh, is left there, 
they then go to stop um, the shifty guy in the Patriot suit from killing the president or taking the president. Basically, Iron Man gets all the way up to Air Force One, but it's too late. He already has the president, and he threw a hole in the Air Force One, and he's throwing people out. So during this entire time, Tony Stark now has to save all these people while the president is now gone um, in the Trojan suit, and is going back to the killing. But during this entire time, the Shifty Guy is on board, and the Shifty Guy died because of the pulsar in his chest. And Iron Man's chest blows a uh, hole in him. He says, yeah, we'll come back from that. And there's no coming back from that. So he's gone. But um, I was annoyed by him anyway. Um, so basically, we're seeing uh, Iron Man save all of these people. And the way that they did this was pretty cool. It looked, it looked super real. Um, that since Iron Man can't hold everybody, everybody's going to have to connect to everybody. And then able to land everybody into the ocean. Now, as he's getting ready to go back, the Mark 42 gets hit by a, a semi-truck and the pieces are all over the place. I had a problem with that. I had a, I had a problem with a lot of things with this uh, Mark 42 suit. It almost seemed like the Mark 42 suit was a bunch of uh, articles of clothing that he could just put on. It was so weak and flimsy. Every little thing, it was falling to pieces. That's not Iron Man to me. But I get it. It was, it was good for the movie. Anyway, we get to the final scene of this movie where we're going to get the fight of the century between Iron Man and Killing, the extremists and the Iron Man suits. So sure enough, he says this is the house party protocol and basically all of the suits. I'm going to say from Mark 4, Mark 4 or 5, all the way to Mark 41. So that's about, I don't know, that's about 30 something suits. So we see all different types of Iron Man suits, Iron Man concepts, all here ready to fight. And there's a huge fight going on, and the way that he jumped into the suit, the suit, the suit, the suit, the suit, the suit. Hands down, that was great. And I didn't appreciate it the first time because once again, that's the commander. But I did appreciate it then. So finally, he's getting through all of these, all of these goons gets to Pepper, tries to free Pepper, Pepper falls into the fire. We're assuming Pepper is dead. Now, Killian comes up, him and Killian is fighting, and as Killian is tearing through one of the suits, he's jumping out into another suit. And as he's jumping out to another suit, he jumps into another suit. And now finally, inbound is Mark 42, the prodigal suit. Sure enough, he gets there, and Tony's getting ready to get the suit on him, and he trips over something, and he falls to pieces once again. The suit falls to pieces. I'm getting pissed off with the suit anyway, but I like what they used. They used all of this to give us this next part. Now, he says, he sends the suit to connect onto Killian. He tells Jarvis to blow Mark 42, and it explodes. Now, he's thinking that Killian is dead. Killian is not dead, and sure enough, guess who's not dead also? Pepper Potts. So Pepper Potts has the extremis in her, so she's alive. Pepper then rips off the Iron Man suit uh, arm, puts the arm on her, uses the propulsor, kicks a, 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 a missile or something like that over to Killian, blows him up. She wins and she, uh, she, she is a hero of the day. And then during this time, Iron Man says, you know what, uh, clean slate protocol. Clean Slate Protocol is for him to destroy every single one of the Iron Man suits. This broke my heart. This broke my heart a lot. So, he ends up doing that. All of his suits uh, destroys. He ends up getting Extremis out of uh, Pepper. And while he was doing that, he ends up getting all the shrapnel out of his heart and taking out his heart again. All that work in Iron Man 2 creating a new element, and my man just kind of takes the element and chucks it into the ocean. I hope that's not what happened. I hope that was just the arc reactor and he took the actual element that he just created out. Um, I don't know, it was kind of it was kind of a lackluster and sad way for this to end. But then at the end of the movie, uh, we get reassured of why Tony Stark is who he is. He simply says, I'm Iron Man. And that's the end of the movie. So um, yeah, even though the, the after credit even pissed me off because you would think that the after credit scene will, will give you more information for the next movies as they've been all, always doing. No, we didn't get that. We got him sitting on a bed talking to Bruce Banner. I mean, remember the whole time, Tony's narrating everything that we saw. So he's really, he was really talking to Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner's sleeping. He 
he says, yo, I don't have the temperament, I'm not that kind of doctor. And that was it. So, um, Iron Man 3. What did I think about Iron Man 3? Well, I thought this movie was, was really good. Um, for the parts that, that it shined. I did not like Mandarin Twist. Um, granted, I'm going to work on another series for these movies. Now, there are movies, many movies in between these bigger movies, which is called Marvel One Shot. Now, one of these movies, they're actually touching on the fact that Ben Kingsley is in jail and the real Mandarin breaks him out of jail because he wants to confront him, the real Mandarin. So now, there is a real Mandarin. I hope Marvel didn't forget about that. I hope Marvel somehow uses that in the future. I don't know when or how they're going to do that. If they're going to do another Iron Man 4 with the real Mandarin, I don't know. To me, it's just a little too late. Um, I thought the movie, once again, I thought the movie was really good for what it did. Uh, now, this movie did not connect anything or, or pull the story along for the entire MCU universe. It was kind of an isolated movie within Iron Man. We see the effects of what happened at New, after New York. We saw the fact that uh, Iron Man is, is going crazy when it comes to more suits, more suits, more suits. Um, we don't see any other uh, Avenger. We don't see anything in this entire movie. It was a movie that was just simply isolated to Tony Stark's character. We don't get any mentions of any Infinity Stones, nothing. So it was just like, eh, okay, it is what it is. So the movie was good. Uh, besides that, that, that whole part with uh, the Mandarin, that, that really took the wind out of my sails. But um, everything else, uh, the way that they had the suit coming on him and coming off, going on to people, I thought that was just awesome. Uh, they did a great job with that. Um, there's not much else to really critique this movie on. Uh, once again, this movie doesn't really give any um, any push to the overall story of the MCU. Now, the next few movies that we're going to be touching on will give us a, a push for what's going to happen in the next set of Marvel Cinematic movies. The next movie that we're going to be touching on, we're going to talk about my man, Thor, and I got a surprise for you guys. I've been talking about it, and yeah, um, I've been talking about it. But anyway, uh, once again, thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out with the kid. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Tell your folks, tell your friends. Uh, get ready. We have some more stuff to discuss. And as always, stay classy. No, I don't ever say that. I'm not going to say that now. Sam's out. I'm